of course, the problem with all of these things, Jamie, things like cancel culture and all of this crazy excess where, uh, you know, we are no longer um, celebrating generals of the Confederacy. This has all been highly problematic, but maybe no more difficult for anybody than it has been for Dave Rubin. And ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, longtime listeners of this program know that for probably four or five years, has it been that long? Um, I have, as one of my projects, in addition with raising my children, um, have wanted to make Dave Rubin fess up to the fact that he is not, in fact, on the left. He's not a lefty, that he's espousing right-wing talking points. And over the years, when I heard he was having a book that was going to come out, and it took a long time for that book to come out, actually. I think there was some problems with the marketing at one point. Um, he, um, I kept pushing, and eventually he had to sort of concede that he is a righty, now works for Blaze Television, Glenn Beck's thing, and the circle, I believe, has been closed in this interview with Michael Knowles. Uh, Michael Knowles is that guy who uh, had a, a demo reel and now works for uh, Daily Wire. Now, I should warn you, this is a long in, uh, long uh, clip, but we're going to go through it because it is both so uh, impressive in its stupidity and also, I think, impressive in its honesty. What does the future look like in, the, in our remaining three minutes? Give me, give me some hope. Or don't. You know, gonna, or gonna, I could tack on two hours. Yeah, I, uh, yeah we might need here. it for that question. Um, what does the future look like? Well, I always say that I'm a world-weary optimist. I'm an optimist mm. ultimately because I don't know how you could do what we do, meaning talk about the world and yeah. explore all this no, stuff. No, pause it. Just don't, don't. Have you don't have to level. cut to me. Just like in a pause it because he's, a, he's an optimist. Keep that in mind. What is an optimist? Somebody who thinks that uh, ultimately things are going to uh, be better. I just want you well, to optimism. follow this. I wish we could diagram it, but go ahead. Because otherwise, well, first off, this would be depressing as hell all right. the time, but I don't know how I could wake up and do it. <laughs> You're right. but, but at the same time, I describe myself as world weary because uh, as I think I said before, I'm, I'm a realist, I think first. You know, I don't, I see the world as it is, not you'll, as you'll I want it to be. You know, like yeah. I want the world to be a certain way, but that doesn't mean it is. Uh, you know, what happens is with a lot of these, Positive. the Marxists, the leftists. Now that's, uh, that's not optimism. Uh, having aspirations is not optimistic. Uh, being thinking that things are going to work out is optimistic. So he doesn't know what optimism means, and he's he's world weary. He's a realist. He's an optimist realist. He's an optimist and a realist. Good. Is uh, you know what happens is with a lot of these the Marxists, the leftists, whatever they are, they just want the world to be a certain way, so they demand that it be that way. Yeah. And they'll burn everything down in the process. I pause think, it now. Now here's so what let's I just want. Well, I want to just diagram that too. So he's an optimist realist. Um, now the optimist, right, is not him. He wants things that way, but he doesn't think that he doesn't, he doesn't delude himself as to that they're good. Now these leftist Marxists, they want things to be better. And what they do is they demand that it's better. So, which is sort of like what he is, according to him, an optimist realist. Like, I want things to be better, but I know that they're not, because I, I could see how things are, which, of course, if you want things to be better, you must see how they are now, too. So he's basically making no distinction, as far as I can tell, except for they burn it all down. So that's where we left it. They burn it all down. Continue Generally could see as a, if we're, if we're trying to get a roadmap to some sanity in the future. Yeah. Well, I think Trump has to win. Yeah, I, yeah. I think, wait, wait, go back, go like, back a little bit. A, go back a little bit. I mean, it's just like every moment is just a a contradiction. It really is. It's amazing how he, he doesn't even have to wait ten seconds, but continue. Want the world to be a certain way, so they demand that it be that way. Yeah, you know? and they'll burn everything down in the process. I think here's what I generally could see as a if we're if we're trying to get a roadmap to some sanity in the future. Yeah. Well, I think Trump has to win. Yeah, I, yeah. I think. <laughs> 
like that's just an you think odd... it really matters 2020 is yeah you know i've been thinking about this a lot it's like you know every election now this is the most important election ever it's never been more yeah, important right. you know our values were uh, this time it's like man if he doesn't win anything that we remember about america yeah. and i don't say this as some rah-rah trump guy um they're burning down the the buildings and they're the they're here to ruin to wreck the entire thing yeah. they, they're here it's yeah. here the ship has arrived on the shore do we want to just sit there and watch as they burn our houses down or do we want to do something this is also the irony of the people that i'm even more frustrated with and you know the, the crazy leftists i'm like not even frustrated by them anymore because it's <laughs> kind of funny. it is yeah, what it whatever, is yeah. but i, I would say the never trump conservatives you know this, this all three of them this yeah. bulwark <laughs> bill crystal david from crew the bulwark it's like oh you guys God. just want to be liked by lefties yeah they're funded you, by leftists yeah so yeah you so want to be yeah. liked by lefties <laughs> you don't want to do anything or conserve <laughs> anything really you want to go Plus, to these parties you want to conserve their you know, he just skips over the people who are going to burn down his house he just skips out of the people who are going to change everything that they we remember about America. I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is that we remember. Is it is it, we re, uh, like? Is he talking about slavery? Is he just talking about like? Just I don't know. Like I'm not quite clear on what he's talking about that we're remembering. He's not very specific about that. But he just quickly skips over those people to the most irrelevant group of people you could actually have who Knowles himself says is three people, but they have websites. Of course, they're funded by lefties. I mean, uh, wh why wouldn't you pour money into that? But here, um, and I'm being facetious, but uh, continue. Their paychecks and their- Yeah, that's what they want to the New York Times. Yeah, and I don't like to attack people's motives, but it's yeah. almost impossible. But them, I'm willing the, to. The but for those guys, it's fine. Yeah. What I would say is Trump has to win. Now, not that that will stop this because it will then- cause it to freak out even more. Yeah. So I think we're in we're in for four more crazy years for sure. Yeah. The only way we're in for four more crazy years that at least continue freedom and capitalism is through Trump. What I think really is the is the pivotal year of all of this because this can't go on forever. No yeah. no movement goes on forever, right? Eventually it either spins out of control in a horrific way or it yeah. it perhaps winds down or something in the middle. I think 2024, well, even though nobody wants to do What are the other <laughs> options? It either spins out of control or winds down or something in the middle. Like the what? Ruben theory of change. <laughs> that's that's political science. He, he has a degree in political science. We forget about this. But yeah, it's true. You know, I, I, I think like the, the, one of the realities is like it's either going to be um, uh, Monday or Sunday and then or any of the days in between. 2024 yeah, right gosh um i think that's where this thing really gets reset i think yeah. if trump wins yeah. again we'll have had eight years of trump people will be exhausted by it but will have survived the intersectional collectivist lunacy yeah. and then you know what happens you're going to get a crop of republicans like dan crenshaw and tim scott and maybe candace owens yeah and, uh, yes you will be old maybe, enough maybe, maybe, yeah bro. yeah maybe ben shapiro maybe michael knowles um, Nikki young. Haley, you'll get a it does not, maybe not even for president, yeah. but like you will get a crop. No, of, I only want the top job. I yeah. only want, but I'm sorry. <laughs> you will get a crop of truly intellect, intellectually diverse yeah. people who care, know <laughs> about America. Like Trump, again, I don't have Trump derangement syndrome. Like, you know I'm this most guy, likely like, voting. This guy, like, how narrow is this guy's world that he can come up with when he talks about conservative intellectuals? It's Michael Knowles. Ben Shapiro, Candace Owens, Nikki Haley, and did he and, and Dan Crenshaw? Yeah. And, and then he throws Tim Scott in there. Has he uh, not been paying attention to every Republican primary that's been going on this entire summer where QAnon uh, incumb uh, challenges are just knocking off incumbents? <laughs> well, of course not. But 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 this guy, like he's he's positing that like after eight years of Trump, what's gonna happen is other things are going to spin out of control or it's going to fade away or something in between. And then there's going to be this new crop of real, of, of, of Republicans who are identical to the crop of Republicans that we have now. And they're all incidentally uh, talk show hosts, the vast majority of them. And they're going to change America. And so I don't know, continue. 
think for Trump, I'm, you know, I like, I don't, I actually see Why would you no not? way I mean, around yeah, it. Of course, point. yeah. Um, but, but no, I mean, I am voting for Trump. I, yeah. I can't see, I oh, wait, just go literally back, go can't back, see a way back, around it. You know, it's not even for president, but like, you will get a crop. No, of, I only want the top job. I only want, but I'm sorry. <laughs> you will get a crop of truly intellect, intellectually diverse yeah. People who care, know about America, like Trump. Again, I don't have Trump derangement syndrome. I'm most yeah. likely voting for Trump. I'm, you know, I like, I don't, I actually see Why would you no not? way I around mean, yeah, it. Of course, point. yeah. Um, <laughs> but, no way around it. But no, I mean, I am voting for Trump. I, yeah. I can't see, I just literally can't right. see a way around it. You know, yeah. it's just, it just is what it is. Yeah. Um, yep. And now I'll be canceled by the time I walk. I, I know, that's, that's, I that's over. You just let it. No, we mis- already canceled who's, you. Who's, who's, who, who's going to cancel him? The He's place. on a right-wing show. He's on a right-wing network. How, who's going to get canceled? In fact, look, we all know the reality here. Dave Rubin is afraid that he would get canceled if he said he was going to vote for Joe Biden. That's the one that's going to get him canceled. I'm not, I don't know, if I had the ability to cancel the Dave Rubin, Dave Rubin wouldn't be there. We wouldn't, he wouldn't be on video. I have the ability to criticize Dave Rubin. I have the ability to mock Dave Rubin. I have the ability to point out, as I think really, honestly, a significant portion of the American population would, that Dave Rubin speaks nothing but nonsense. But I don't have the ability to cancel him. It's only. In fact, I'm celebrating the fact that he's voting for Donald Trump because he has finally, finally come out of the closet and admitted who he is and what his ideology is. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, Joe Biden is too radical for this guy. I like that electing Joe Biden is what's going to radicalize everyone instead of just mollify them and return every his entire Right. His election is nothing will change for like how your life was. Let's go back to yeah. what but, it was. Go back to brunch. Dave Rubin's whole raison d'etre, as it were, that the Democratic Party was not like Joe Biden anymore. Wasn't that like, isn't that his whole thing? Well, right. Try I mean, and keep up. But, but honestly, wasn't that like his, the whole premise of Dave Rubin, I thought was like, I'm like the old Democrats. Yeah, Not these radical well, new ones like. But Biden was Obama's vice president, and I left that club when he did that. I mean that that, that was his old grift that Dave Rubin was doing, and I think he recognized that there is just not very much of a market for that anymore. Right. All of the libertarians are fascists now, so you got to pick a lane. Right. Yeah, exactly. It, that's what's it, going on. He has to be the former lefty now. I guess that's, I mean, I guess from a narrative structure, you can't be the disaffected lefty forever. You have to be the former lefty. Mm-hmm. It's depressing uh, to me how all these cancel culture things, it like people are imagining themselves as television producers that get to like cancel shows. Cause this comes from like cancel Colbert. And even that was like, a, I think a reaction to how people wanted, you know, Arrested Development to get another season. And it's all just consumer culture. Like all this stuff is like, what can I have available to consume? And we should not let people consume that stuff. It's But isn't it also just like, you know, replaced PC, right? I mean, it's just, it's Mm -hmm. just like another sort of like, you know, Mm -hmm. club that that just like, this is the, the, I mean, it it, it really is, right? I mean, this is just another like sort of PC complaint. Yeah. Uh, anti PCism. It's just that, you know, uh, uh, there's burnout with these terms at one point. All right. So let's go to the, uh, the, the coup de grace where he just says, of course I'm voting for Trump and that's it. Right. Or did we finish it already? That was, that was the end. Oh, that was mm-hmm. the end. All right. Well, there it is. Uh, Dave Rubin. Uh, thank you for making my return. Um, uh, so pleasant. Um, I'm sorry I had to, uh, he's blocked me on Twitter, so I don't get the chance to see this stuff that often. Um, <laughs> it's a real shame. I mean, Dave's basically an anti-communist now. He supported Bolsonaro because he was against the Marxists, mm-hmm. and now he's supporting uh, Trump. I think he, Bolsonaro, oh wait. Bolsonaro. 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 Yeah. yeah, Bolsonaro, I think is mm-hmm. who he, well, he was, yeah, he was anti-PC, so that was good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. One more thing on the cancellation uh, news item or whatever you want to call it. Citations Needed had a very good news brief on it. And I think um, I agree with 100% of their take. So I recommend listening to it.